Hi, this is John again from Mount Melory, Saturday's Weekend. I'm here to interview today at Margaret Brock. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, John. You had a little problem a good few years ago. Would you like to tell us about your problem, Margaret? I Hi. did. I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in July 2013. Um, it all started in March, February 2013. I had a gallbladder. Didn't really get well. Um, had to go back to the doctor on so a continuous basis and a few scans and a few other tests and it proved that I had pancreatic cancer wrapped around the main artery uh, at the head of my pancreas and give it no hope. Oh. I was given max a year. Oh. Nine months to a year. And that must be a blow to your It was mother. a big blow. I was 52. Um, three kids all away and too young to stop and give up so I was determined to stay going um, started radiotherapy or chemotherapy at the end of July and um, did nine sessions of that then did radiotherapy from December to the, end, the middle of February uh, with chemo tablets. Um, there was never such a thing as a having an operation, but after the treatments, they, it was operable. So I had the operation on the 19th of June 2014. And the operation obviously was, was a success? A success. Um, everything they took was clear, um, except for two lip nuts. Um, so I went back on chemo again for a little while after surgery just for a safeguard. And how long from the start to the finish of that did that last for? Um, oh God, maybe about two years. Between surgery and treatments, about a year and a half to two years. And you always, I, I know now, you got well after that, you were well after that. I was very, very well. Um, until February this year. Every, all my scans all over the years, the last five years, have been clear um, up to um, April this year. And April this year, up to April this year, you were well? I was well. Everything was looking good for you? I was living a normal life. Yes, and your family was around? Yeah, visited Australia, visited plenty of holidays, good time. Um, what happened yeah. in, what did happen in May? May? In about February, after Christmas, just didn't feel great. Um, felt sick. Um, had to go looking for my scans again. Wasn't due to do them until the end of April. Um, I had, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, which was an early onset of pancreatic cancer which can be an onset to pancreatic cancer. Um, I did scans, um, a CT PET scan and biopsies and it proved that the cancer was back at the back of my pancreas of what's left. That must be a major blow. A major blow. I was very, very sick. And how did your family take to this when you had to break the news? Um, they were positive enough because I'm positive um, but it was a blow a major blow um, but to treat them away it is hard to make those phone calls to say that you're sick um, they stay in touch they come home um, all I can do is fight this for them yeah. and um, this time I believe you're an extra ailment which you had in the first time? Extra problems meaning like I didn't lose my hair the last time um, I kept all my eyebrows and eyelashes the last time this time I've kept my eyebrows and things as well but the hair did go um, maybe it's because of a top up I don't know it's the same treatments why it happened this time I don't have answers and they don't neither so whatever I can say that you were wearing a hairpiece. I'm wearing a hairpiece now, but I normally don't wear it for the summer because they're actually very, very hot. Um, you couldn't wear them the whole.
all the time in the summer. All right. So, you're a mighty woman. You're a master. And um, what would you like to say to people that has your ailment? Um, say to speak to the camera there. That has your ailment. You're telling your story very good to us now. Um, would you like to... What would you say? The thing about pancreatic cancer is... Um, eight percent of people just five managed to get to the five years. Now I've been very, very lucky. I hit the five-year marker, but unlucky because the cancer came back. Um, most people die within the first year to eighteen months. That's it. Even doing treatments. Um, so it's really, I don't know. Is it being positive? Pat look. On everyone's, on my part, I don't know. Um, I've been very, very lucky to get to five years, but the thing with pancreatic cancer is, you can have digestion. When you go to the doctor, they're probably giving you tablets for digestion, um, other things, um, early onset diabetes, uh, losing weight, um, for no apparent reason. If you're not trying to lose weight. Um, not dieting, um, just weight falling off you for no apparent reason. Um, people, uh, doctors don't pick up, not giving out to doctors, I wouldn't dream of it, but doctors don't pick up on um, their symptoms on the early stages, so most people are not diagnosed until they're in the third or fourth stage of pancreatic cancer. Right. Um, what? Would you um, think your future looks like now? My future? My son gets married in September, so that's my main priority at the moment. I'd like to do a bit more travelling, um, and I think I will do it. I have to be this you. again. Good on you. I have to. Like, the, the more research that goes in to cancer, the better for people. Breast cancer has come on in leaps and bounds, whereas pancreatic cancer has got left behind. And if I can rattle someone thinking, oh, I don't feel well and I need to go to a doctor, if I can save one person's life from this, that's my job done. Your main ambition is to fight for us. Yeah. I have too much to live for a job. I'm 56. Well, and I was the youngest person that's ever died from this cancer. There is an awful lot younger. And it's not just alcoholics. And it's not just... The perception out there of pancreatic cancer is, oh, you must have drank the ass out of a pot. But that's not true. It's not true. Um, so like I said to you a while ago, if I can save one person's life from this. One. I have no doubt about it. You will. Uh make it, bring it to the forefront that it is a problem, your interview, definitely. Good. I have no doubt about that. Meg, you're a positive and strong woman. Thank you for talking to no us. No matter, John. Thanks. Glad to do it.